نحمده نستعينه نستغفره ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساءة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يحسهما فلا يضر إلا نفسا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فقال أز وجل وقاتلوا في سبيل الله الذين يقاتلونكم ولا تعتدوا إن الله لا يحب المعتدين وقال أز وجل يا أيها الذين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حتى تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أحمد وأصلي على رسول الكريم Today's topic that I want to talk about is there's so much material on it that I hope inshallah I don't get sidetracked and I stick with the points that I want to make and I have a lot to discuss so this might go into two khutbas we'll see Recently, uh, there have been some books published. Uh, there was a book published by some Christian missionaries, and then recently Glenn Beck. How many people know Glenn Beck? Uh, he wrote a book. It's called, It is About Islam. It is Islam. Islam is the problem. Islam is inherently violent. And this is what I want to talk about today. The idea that Islam is inherently violent. Why don't we look at Christian militia militant groups in America? Because I think even Muslims, we feel like, you know, we don't have really a good response sometimes. People feel they're stuck. Recently, uh, Fox News, uh, this really came to my mind because, you know, Fox News did this thing where it went to is the ISNA convention or some Muslim convention asking Muslims, so what do you think about, you know, Islam being a militant? And I saw that a lot of people, or everyone I saw, didn't really have any good responses. And I think... We Muslims, we don't realize the reality, part of it is we don't rea realize the reality of the situation we live in. So I want to talk about Christian right-wing militia groups in America, what they're doing, how many they are, what is their global influence, what is their global terror network like, and then to be able to see, okay, if you say... You know, if you take things literally, for example, if the Quran says, Fight with those who fight with you, who fight in the path of those who fight with you, etc., etc. If you take things literally, then we can also take the Bible literally, where Jesus says, Bring my enemies to me and kill them before me. Jesus says this in the Bible. It's in the Bible. And when you tell a pastor this, he doesn't believe you that it's in the Bible because he doesn't know his own Bible. Jesus said in the Bible, I have not come to bring peace. I have come to divide the father from the son and the mother from the daughter and so on and so forth. This is all in the Bible. And those people who think, oh, all the violence is in the Quran and there's no violence in the Bible, they're fooling themselves. But I'm not going to talk about violence in the Quran and the Bible today. I want to talk about real hate groups because one of the problems is we give these groups different names. Sometimes they're called hate groups. Sometimes we call them militias. Sometimes they're called skinheads. Sometimes they're called with different names. And we don't realize what is the ideology of all these people. What is it that they believe? How many are there? How many, I mean, you know, it's just amazing when you, when you actually look at and you're able to compare it. Inshallah, if I'm able to say everything I want to say today, you will be quite surprised and inshallah, you in your heart will feel vindicated. And inshallah, if this YouTube video goes out, it will also vindicate a lot of Muslims in terms of feeling that, oh, you know, there must be something wrong with Islam that so many Muslims are violent. And you know, when you read Glenn Beck, right? I mean, he's like, oh, don't buy into that moderate stuff. You know, it's just all bad. Basically, except it's the religion, right? In the very back, which... You know, you used to sell the book, right? He says, and Glenn Beck, by the way, he has millions of followers, millions of listeners. You know, if you listen to talk show uh, radio host, uh, you know, like for example, what's his name? We forget now. Rush Limbaugh, and then Sean Hannity, and then Glenn Beck, and Ann Cutler, and all these people. They have, you know, their arguments are like a balloon that you can just pop. 
but you just need the information to be able to do it. I bet you Fox News would never invite me after this khutbah on their channel. Never. Because, it, anyway, let me just start one step at a time. Because, you know, usually we live in the cities and we don't realize, because in the cities there's cops, there's law and order, there's not much you can do. But you start going to the rural areas where people own guns, you know, and you start understanding what do they think and what their mentality is, it's pretty, it's pretty scary. Okay? In Texas, if you go to somebody's land by mistake, you might get shot at, and that's not even a, it's not even a joke. So, let me start by just one point at a time, because I'm going to start very small, and then I'm going to go at the global scale, talking about some of the global networks, some of the networks that are being built that everybody knows about. Training camps of Christians where they learn close combat. Uh, okay, fine. I'll start with this, but I wanted to start small. This is an article that was uh, that just came out. Is America's militias movement? By the way, America militias movements are movements that are also anti-government. But the common theme between all militia groups is that they believe in white supremacy and they're Christian, right-wing Christian. In fact, they believe Jesus was white. He wasn't Middle Eastern. They believe Jesus was white. And they'll try to argue with the Bible proving to you that Jesus was white too, just like the Germans are white. Anyway, that aside, again, I'm not going to go into those debates. But America's militia movement on the rise. And up an unpaved road, uh, unpaved Idaho road, self-styled patriots. They also call themselves patriots gather to plan and train in close quarters combat. This is not just the only place. It's, it's called the Cit Citadel, by the way. You can go there if you're white and you believe in Christianity, you can enroll, you live there, you pay rent. They train you in close uh, combat. And why? We're going to come to this in a second, okay? But just keep this in mind. Now I'm going to go one step at a time. Four days after September 11th happened. Because we usually hear, oh, this person killed the Sikh. Right? Well, this person killed the Sikh. It was a hate group. But we don't study where was this group, this person influenced by? Which church was he influenced by? Which militia groups was he influenced by? Who were his teachers? Who gave him these radical ideas that he should go and kill somebody he thinks is a Muslim but happens to be a Sikh? Actually, four days ago, a white militia guy stabbed a Sikh taxi driver in Chicago just four days ago, thinking that he's a Muslim. Four days after September 11th happened, on uh, this guy named Balbir Singh Sodi from India, he got killed by a um, a white supremacist, and uh, I'll talk about the group that he belongs to, okay, in a second. Then you know, recently when the temple thing happened, and got all of these people, they carry weapons. And I'll talk about why the arms, the right to arms is such a right-wing thing and why the right to arms is such a big thing in America. But this guy, he also took a semi-automatic weapon and just opened fire. But of course, we're going to call it hate group. We're not going to call it terrorist. Even though there may be organized groups teaching this ideology that causes these people to act this way. You know... Sociologically, we know that in any society, 7%, around 7% of any society is always on the radical side of thinking. Politically, they're radical, 7%. And this is in normal circumstances. If the circumstances become where it's critical or there's crisis or there's an emergency, then it can even, uh, then out of that 7%, a small minority of a few people will take action for what they, uh, their, their believe is the problem. A small number. Okay. So the point is, is that, uh, so these people, where did they get their ideas from? Do you know, there are so many popular rock bands that are led by skinheads, neo-Nazis. Just to name a few of the very popular bands. These are music, musics children listen to, teenagers listen to. But those musics, they have racist ideas. They have hate mongering in them. And just to, you know, just to give you an idea of the culture 
right? Because you ever hear that heavy metal, I, I'm sure the youth know what heavy metal is, but when you listen, a lot of the heavy metal uh, singers, they are white supremacist Christians. And so here's just a few, okay, a few of the groups. Uh, angry, angry Aryans. Aryans means white. Angry Aryans, angry white people. There's a book written, written, written recently about angry white people and white, why white people are getting angry, which is a real phenomenon. And they have some justified reasons to be angry too, but I'm not going into that. Brainwash, Chaos 88, Youth of Tomorrow, Deadhead, Warfare, uh, uh, Definite Hate, End Empathy, Forward Area, 96 Brigade, White Law, Sega, Nemesis, Max Resist, Youngland, No Remorse, Brutal Attack, Final War, Screwdriver, Battle Cry, Empire Falls, Hate Breed, etc., etc. I mean, there's a longer list, but I made the point. There are all these rock bands that are spewing out hate. There's no difference between that. If we had rock bands like this in the Muslim world, they would be playing that on Fox News every day. These are people whose music is sold by the thousands, by the millions sometimes. Again, I want to take it step by step. There's a group called the Montana Freemen. It's a group in Montana. It's a militia group. And militia group, by the way, is based upon the constitutional right or the constitutional clause that you're allowed to have a militia. A militia is an army that's not paid. This is a constitutional right, according to many Americans, that we're allowed to form militias. A non, you know, you have the standing army. In fact, again, I don't want to go into too many details. Many Americans think that it is unconstitutional to have a standing army because the US Constitution does not mention a standing army. The US Constitution only mentions militias, which the idea was that you would have a militia, that there's an army when there you need a defense. And standing army means you can also go on the offense. Anyway, a lot of the people that have been living in America know American culture, know about this stuff. But so there is a, one group called Montana Freeman. And they have uh, different ideas. I'm not going to go into that. But one of the hate groups, white supremacist, right, right wing, what, what does he do? He kills a doctor. George Tiller. Now remember, they're against those, uh, like for example, in this case he was a doctor that helped people get abortion. And so they went and they killed him and then they were sentenced, but they, they belong to this group. And they're not only against abortionists, but they're also against Jews, and they're also against Muslims, and they're also against, you know, so many things. And one of the other common elements between all these groups is that they believe in the end of times, they believe in the apocalypse, they believe the doomsday is coming very soon. And this is another common point. Um, then, let's go on, there's another group, it's called... Uh, it's called Posse Kamitas, which means the force of the country. Another very, uh, very popular militia group in America. By the way, there are hundreds of militia groups right now in America. And if you add up the total number, you're looking at more than 500,000 people in America that are either indirectly, actively, or inactively members or listening to the podcasts or the speeches or reading the newsletters of these people that spew out this type of hate <coughs> against Muslims and against others. Um, let me just read this. For, about the Apasi Kamatas. Uh, which means the force of the country, a loosely organized right-wing social movement in the United States starting in the late 1960s whose members spread uh, and, and, and they, they were caught and they had some legal issues and so on and so forth. Another group called the Militia Organizations of the United States are a private organization that include paramilitary and similar groups here in the U.S. These groups may refer to themselves as militia, unorganized militia, constitutional militia, White groups such as the Posse Comatas existed as early as the 1980s, the 1980s, meaning not too far ago. And it continues. Just to name a few of these white supremacist, right-wing hate groups that is no... I mean, you just change the words from hate groups to fundamentalist Christians to 
to terrorists, it's all, all interchangeable. Because in the end, the result of hate is violence. The, end, the result of terrorism is violence too. You just use a different word. Militia. So let's look at some of the groups. And I just want to give you an idea how deep-rooted this problem is in the U.S. And it's not like the FBI isn't aware. If you go to the FBI website, they talk about this problem. They're aware of this problem. In fact, the, the future of terrorism as if I get to say everything I want to say because I'm already running out of time. The future of terrorism is not going to be so many Muslims as it's going to be home-born Christian militia groups. Now let me just name off a few. Texas Citizens Militia, 2nd Alabama Militia, Alabama Shoals uh, Badgers, Alaska Citizens Militia, Alaska. You know that lady that was running for as the Vice President, uh, Sarah Palin. What did they say about her? She's from a fundamentalist Christian group who take the Bible literally. What does it mean that she, she was born and raised in a fundamental Christian group? It means that she was taught fundamentalist Christians. When we say that in America, it means right-wing super white supremacy groups. That's what it means. It doesn't mean, uh, uh, you know, it has a specific meaning, which means that you're right-wing, white supremacist, literally taking the Bible, you believe Adam was white, Jesus was white, so on and so forth. I'm not going to go into that. Arizona Citizens Militia. Arizona Militia, uh, uh, then Northern Arizona Militia, Arkansas Defense Force, Militia of Washington Country, American Resistance Movement, State of California Unorganized Militia, Minutemen Militia, Florida Free, uh, by the way, Minutemen Militia, they're very famous for trying to do a lot of cross-border -border self on, on their own, kind of like protecting the border on their own, and they'll shoot anybody that comes across, but they have no legal authority, but they'll do it. Florida Free Alliance, Florida, Florida Free Militia, George, Georgia Militia, Militia of Georgia, Idaho Citizens Constitution Militia, North Idaho Lightfoot Militia, 135th Illinois Volunteer Cal Calvary, uh, Illinois State Militia, Indiana Citizens Volunteer Militia, etc., etc. Indiana has a lot. Kansas State Militia, Kentucky Militia, Northern Kentucky Militia, Louisiana Militia, Maine Constitutional Militia, Sons of Oh Sons of Liberty. By the way, started from here just recently. Um, uh, uh, par, uh, I'm going to come into this. Sons of Militia is actually an organized training group on how to use weapons and stuff. I'm gonna to come to that a little bit later. Minnesota Minutemen Militia, Constitutional Defense Militia of, of uh, Atala County, East Central Mississippi Militia, and it goes on for every state. There's a militia group, there's KK Klan groups. You know how they say, oh, sleeper cells? Well, there's KK K Klan sleeper, sleeper cells. They're the, their pastor, who's the leader, whose name I forget, needs to give one order and they'll do what he wants. It's no different. I mean, so the idea that, you know, Islam is inherently violent, this idea, when you look at, if I... This shows, this would show, Christianity is inherently violent. But do we believe that as Muslims? No. But practically, their violence and the number of people that they have ready to go is a, is a hundred times more than, than us. Just a few more I'm going to read and then I'm going to get back to the, the, the incidents, different incidences and some of the other points that are related to this. United States Constitutional Militia of North Carolina, Constitutional Militia of Clark County, Constitutional Militia of Franklin County, Northeastern I, I, uh, Ohio Defense Force, um, Ohio Defense Force State Headquarters, etc., well, uh, etc. Et Key, Keystone Freedom Fighters, these are all groups. Why doesn't O'Reilly talk about these groups when he's talking about all the other... You can name the Muslim terrorist groups, but this is an unending list. This is an unending list of people that are training. Not only that, there is a group that I'm going to talk about in, in a little bit, but hold on. There's another group. It's called the Christian Patriot Movement. It's called the Christian Patriot Movement. It's a movement of American political commentators and activists. They promote various interpretations of history and law, etc., etc. And it was this person that's, that, because what happened is the militias, they're basically lower middle, lower, lower class, most of them. But they, they, were, they had to take, but they had some 
good arguments, intellectually speaking. This is how the Tea Party started. The Tea Party was funded by three groups. One was the American Prosperity Group. By the way, anybody knows about the Koch brothers? The racist brothers who own the Tyson chicken? Who own everything. They, they are racist brothers, Koch brothers, the three brothers. They own a company and they own a big, and they own trucking industry, Tyson chicken, they have a big, they're fun, they are the ones, one of the primary people who funded the, the Tea Party, the American right-wing, white supremacist Tea Party. The second group was called Don't Go, American for Our Prosperity, and then let me just mention something about Tea Party. Now remember, out of all of these groups, okay, Tea Party is actually one of the more sensitive ones. There's those like skinheads who want to kill you right away if they can. You, okay, if you want to take a scale, Fox News is at the one end of the scale, okay? Fox News is at one end of the scale. Fox News is at one end of the, end of the scale, and Fox News, Bill O'Reilly, Sean Hannity, they're on the, you can say, the most liberal of the right conservative speakers. After that, if you go to the next group, okay, it's basically Tea Party. And one of the main speakers for the Tea Party is Glenn Beck. So, so if you see how I'm doing this, so you have Fox News, TV, and then, uh, and then Tea Party. Tea Party, these are the stats of the Tea Party. Forget about what comes after that, because after that, there's about four or five others that I will explain if I have time. Bloomberg National Poll of Adults of 18 and over showed that 40% of Tea Party support, supporters are 55 or older, okay? 79 are white, 61 are men, 44% of them identify themselves as born again Christians. This is the white tea party, the, the tea party in America. 44% say we're born again Christians. Others join it because of single issues, maybe economic issues or health issues or because they're against Obamacare. But the core of the group is white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestants, who are born-again Christians, etc., etc. Okay, let's continue, inshallah. There's a group called the Southern Poverty Law Center, SPLC. What does it say? Recently released an in-depth report on terrorism in the United States, covering from 2009 to 2015. The report, titled The Age of the Wolf, found that during that period, more people have been killed in America by non-Islamic terrorists, more people were killed, not by jihadists, not by Islamists, but most of the terrorism that was done in the home was done by the militias. Okay, let's continue. They said yes, the jihad is a tremendous threat, pointing out, out that Al-Qaeda's attacks of September remain, remain the deadliest attack on the US history, but the study also noted that the second deadliest was carried out by not an Islamist, Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh also belonged to a militia. Now if I had time, I'd talk about this. The, uh, the arm, it's called the Army of God. It's a militia group that's white supremacist, right wing. They're called the Army of God. And the Army of God, this group, by the way, is, is bigger than Al-Qaeda. It's bigger than Taliban. And they, they have been in conflict with, do you remember the Waco incident where David Quraysh got into a, uh, a battle with the government? They have been in situations where they have actually been in altercations with the law enforcement many, many times. They have had many bombers that are very famous that I'm going to not have time to go into right now. But I just wanted to point that out, that Timothy Way, uh, was also uh, amongst them. So anyway, the Army of God, this group, you can say Army of God, God is Qaeda, Taliban, plus, or times a hundred. That's how many members they have. A network of violent Christians that have been active since the 1980s, the Army of God openly promotes the killing of abortion providers and a long list of terrorists who have been active in that organization include Paul Jennings, who, by the way, killed, did some bombings. Um, and killed uh, a abortion doctor, so on and so forth. Again, I don't want to go too much into this, but my point is, how can someone dare say Islam is inherently violent 
when you yourself have a history like this? How can someone say Islam is inherently violent when you have organizations that are more well-funded, you have organizations that are funded by the richest people in this country, you have organizations that in which you are legally training people how to fight and do close combat, <laughs> and you want to compare that with uh, Muslims, I mean, violence is violence, but the point is, is that no one group is violent per se. It's not the religion that's violent. It's the people that are violent. And there are more Christian violent people, people that behave violently in Christianity as far as militia groups and groups and terror and ideas of hate. There are a lot more of that when you look at the numbers than there are of Muslims, no matter who you count. And you don't even need to justify if it's really real or not real or if Muslims did it or not did it. Now, um, do you think this is just local? There's a bunch of Christians who hate everyone. They hate the Spanish. They hate the Muslims. They don't like the blacks. Is it just us here in America? Or is it becoming a global trend? There is a group, okay? It's called the Eastern Lightning, also called the Church of the Almighty God, which you can say is the beginning of their jihad global network. Uh, to make it short, they're a terrorist organization in China. They're well known. They have done worse things than you can imagine, even if you compare like uh, what's that group called? Boko Haram. Um, uh, okay, so um, they are quite capable of violence against women. In, in May 2014, for example, members of the cult beat a 37-year-old woman named Wu Xiyuan to death in McDonald's in this place in China when she refused to give them her phone number. Eastern Lightning members, such and such, their Chinese names, were convicted of murder for the crime and executed in February of 2014, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They have blackmailed people. They have they have abducted people. They have killed people. So on and so forth. These are organizations in the name of Christianity. Now, Eastern Lightning's other acts of violence have ranged from killing of a grammar school student in 2010 to cult member Min uh, something using a knife to attack an elderly woman and a group of school children. Christian groups are not exempt from Eastern Lightning's fanaticism, etc., etc. Uh, cult members kidnapped 34, uh, 34 members once and held them as hostages for two months. Who did this? Not Muslims, Christians. And again, my point is not to bash Christianity. Christians are good people, and Allah has said they're the people of the book, and they're the closest to the Muslims, right? So there's no question about that. What I'm trying to only make the point is that when you write books of hate, right? Write books of hate like this. You know what Glenn Beck says in this book? This is so interesting, right? He go, in this book that he wrote, which millions of people are going to buy and read and believe, by the way. You know, he says in this book, you know, John Esposito and Georgetown University, He's a, he's a professor of Islamic studies. He's always defended Islam. He's written books about Islam. He's not Muslim, but he's always defended Islam. He says about John Esposito, who's not that well known. Glenn Beck's very well known. He says about John Esposito in his book, oh, he does this just to make a living. He makes a living off of defending Islam. What is he doing? What is this guy doing? He gets to sell millions of books. He, I mean, you know, it's called, in psychology, we call it projection. You're putting your own thoughts and your mind on someone else, right? So anyway, another group, it's called the National Liberation Front, okay? It is a group of Christian militants in India. I'll just mention this, the National Liberation Front, and they say whoever comes into our territory, we're gonna kill them. So it's not just a bunch of militias in America. Christianity, Christian militancy, whether you call it hate groups, you call it skinheads, you call it KKK, you call it Aryan Nation, you call you give it any other name, it's spreading like wildfire in the Christian world on the basis of what? On the hate of Islam. A lot of it's based upon the hate of Islam. It feeds off of the hate of Islam. The National Liberation Front 
has zero tolerance for any religion other than Christianity. The group has repeatedly shown a willingness to kill, kidnap, torture Hindus who refuse to be converted to its extreme <coughs> brand of pro Protestant, Protestant fundamentalism. Who's doing this? Not Muslims. Christians. Again, my point is not to attack Christianity. I want to be very clear about this. There are majority of the Christians, like they will say about us, majority of the Muslims are good, but some are bad, but they don't really mean it because they don't know any better. Sometimes they just say it, but then they'll say the exact opposite in the next sentence. But we know this for a fact. Most Christians are peaceful. Most Christians are good. But there are Christians like this, just like there may be Muslims like this. And that's my only point. So Muslims should feel vindicated. They shouldn't feel uh, this thing, okay, you know, maybe Islam has something violent. Maybe there is something wrong with Islam. Maybe Islam doesn't fit in somehow. Maybe we're overreacting or so many other reasons we might think that we are reacting the way we are. It's not just us. It's not just us. There's a group in America. It's in Arizona. It's in Colorado. It's called the Concerned Christians. Again, my time is running out. Let me do the second book and then I have to... Um, uh, I didn't even get through what I wanted to, but inshallah, and maybe next week I will continue on this. Let me mention this quickly. So, just a little bit about the Christian, the concerned Christians. It's a group in Colorado. <coughs> so, 60 of its members suddenly quit their jobs. Where did they go? They vanished. They quit their jobs. <coughs> and you know where they were found? They were found in Israel. You know why they were found in Israel? They wanted to bomb Masjid al Aqsa. <coughs> 60 people that belonged to this group, the concerned Christians. It turned out, in 1999, the Israeli officials arrested 14 members of the concerned Christians in Jerusalem and deported them from Israel because they suspected them of plotting terrorist attacks against Muslims. One likely target, according to the Israeli police, was Jerusalem's Al-Aqsa Mosque. The same mosque was targeted in 1969 when a Christian from Australia named Dennis Michael Rohit <coughs> successfully tried to destroy it by, by Arison. So Muslims are not only violent ones. These are, these are extreme plans that would have extreme political consequences. There's another group, it's called Christian Identity. Same thing, again, I don't have time. The, if you remember this, because I don't have time now, the Sentinental uh, uh, Olympic Park. You remember the, the plane that flew into the IRS building in Texas? Another guy, he has a background of listening and of the preaching of militia men. And it's just, it's a long list, but what I want to end with maybe, if I have a little bit of time, uh, is this. I just want to give you a diagram so you understand this. You know how extreme Fox News sounds to us when we listen to it? I don't know if any of you listen to it, but when you listen to it, you want to shut it off or change the channel because it's hard to take the lies that they spread. By the way, O'Reilly once said in his show, he asking uh, a Muslim, he said, talking to a Muslim, he said, there's no Christian, there's no Christian terrorist groups. Just outlie, lie, just like that. Anyway, on the right side, it's Fox News. That's this, the lightest amount of hate you'll hear on the right wing is Fox News. Fox News is supposed to be nice. Then when you get a little, as you're a white Christian and you're listening to Fox News and you get into it, you're like, oh wow, this is really interesting. You start with Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh and then you start listening to Glenn Beck and you join the Tea Party. And maybe then you're like, oh wow, this is interesting. You know, this is, this is right, this is the huck. Then, from there are YouTube channels of people like Mark uh, Schuldice who have about 300,000 subscribers of their YouTube list, more than like 24 million hits. Podcasts, newsletters by different organizations, you start reading their, their literature, their ideas, 
their interpretation of the Bible, how Jesus was actually white and the original man was white and all of that, then you become more fundamentalist, then you join those churches, you join those churches that are all about we have the right to bear arms. Oh, I didn't even get into that. Do you know how many groups there are right now working to arm every single church in America? I wish I had time to go into that, but there is a National Organization of Church Security and Safety Management, www.nocssm. One of the groups, one of the many groups that's basically arming every church because they believe in the end of times. And guess who's one of the enemies? Muslims. So you start joining those right-wing churches then. Then after that, the next step is you join the KKK, the Aryan Nation, the skinheads, start listening to heavy metal. One of the second last, the, because the last one is really to do with the Pope and his new statements. I'm not going to go into that today. But do you know one of the most terrorist organizations was run by a man named Eric Prince. He ran the company called Blackwater. Anybody ever heard of Blackwater? Blackwater is a, was a basically a military man, white supremacist, right wing. He started this organization with the sole purpose of going into Muslim countries and killing as many Muslims as possible until he was forced to resign. It was funded by the government because they didn't know any better. And then later on he had to resign, but the organization, what Blackwater is the largest, the largest independent military organization in the world. It's a military organization in North Carolina. It's a military organization, but it's private. So if the government doesn't want to send its army, it sends Blackwater. And you should you watch the YouTube video of how those Blackwater people, they listen to that same heavy metal that I was talking about while they are shooting people for no reason in the Iraqi streets, driving over civilians for no reason at all. And yes, it's the Muslims that are the terrorists of the world. Muslims have the entire monopoly over violence. This is what these people like Glenn Beck and these people say. But their arguments, like I said, in the end of the day is like a balloon. It's as, as strong as a little balloon and you take a little needle and just prick it. Their arguments go, When the truth comes, the falsehood has to vanish, has no choice. So anyway, I hope uh, you feel that you understand. And by the way, this whole militia thing that's going on is very important for understanding what are the possible situations and scenarios for Muslims in the future. But again, I'm not going to go into that. But we are talking about a very large number of people that have very, very radical ideas and uh, they are not nice. Uh, ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكون من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة في حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اغفر لنا وارحمنا اللهم تجعل خلافة المسلمين في هذه الأرض اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك آمين اللهم آمين إن الله يعمل بالأدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم فاستجب لكم فأقيموا الصلاة. إن شاء الله